Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rasul Pereira. Prime Minister Modi on Friday virtually delivered the keynote address at this year's high-level segment of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. The annual segment convenes a diverse group of high-level representatives from government, private sector, civil society and academia. This was the first opportunity for Prime Minister Modi to address the broader UN membership since India's overwhelming election as a non-permanent member of the Security Council. The theme of this year's high-level segment is multilateralism after COVID-19. What kind of UN do we need at the 75th anniversary? In this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the key takeaways from uh, the high-level segment of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Joining me on the program today are Yoshita Singh, Chief Correspondent, PTI New York, Prabhu Dayal, former Ambassador, and Harshvi Pan, Head Strategic Studies of the World Research Foundation. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. All right, Yoshita, I'd like to begin the program with you first. Let's understand the highlights and the key points, really, of uh, the you know, high-level segment of, of the uh, UN ECOSOC. Right. Uh, thank you, Frank, for having me on your show. Um, and uh, a big hello to my fellow uh, panelists as well. Uh, so yes, it was a high-level segment of the UN ECOSOC and, uh, you know, in a way I feel that it was a precursor as to how the UN General Assembly will function. It was a virtual setup. Uh, the global leaders, heads of state and government were uh, discussing it virtually and on a very crucial topic, multilateralism and also how the UN, the UN system and multilateralism needs to focus and work in a post COVID-19 uh, era, because we all know uh, there's going to be a new normal after this coronavirus uh, pandemic, and uh, the nations really had to come together to discuss uh, what the challenges are and how they have to work together to ensure that they defeat this pandemic and come across stronger, build back uh, better, uh, and in a stronger multilateral forum. I mean, we've all seen that the UN, founded in like 75 years ago, really uh, needs to be reformed. Uh, Prime Minister Modi has called for a reformed multilateralism. It's one of the priorities of India for the Security Council. So again, it was uh, with this context in mind, uh, reforming international institutions in a manner that they attend to the needs of the people, the people on the ground. Uh, you know, it's, it's not about nations anymore. It's really to ensure that nobody is left behind, uh, which is the crux of a lot of the developing agenda of many countries. So uh, at the virtual forum uh, today and uh, over these few past few days that we saw, it was really a call for multilateralism and in, in reforming the multilateralism, whether it's Security Council, uh, whether it's India's role uh, as a Security Council member from next year, um, and uh, obviously take into account how the world will reopen or re-emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. And that called for a stronger uh, cooperation between nations. Absolutely. I'll come to multilateralism in just a bit, uh, but uh, let's uh, try and understand and put into perspective what the UN ECOSOC is, Ambassador, because, you know, we've all heard of the UNSC, we've all heard of the UNGA and the other popular uh, UN establishments. But, you know, what is the role of the UN ECOSOC and uh, why, why is this high level segment so important? Well, ECOSOC is the Economic and Social and Cultural Council of the United Nations. It's a uh, highly important body of uh, the international setup and the high level segment focuses on issues of global importance our prime minister had addressed the high level segment in 2016 and that was at the 70th anniversary of ecosoc and uh, it's a very uh, important and significant uh, development that he has been again invited to attend the high level segment uh, this time, of course, at the uh, 75th uh, anniversary of the United Nations, and in fact, to deliver the keynote address at this session. Uh, the Prime Minister is a very forthright person. He is not known to mince his uh, words or to sort of uh, beat about the bush. He talks direct and to the point. He hits the nail on the head. And I think he said that only reformed multilateralism with a reformed United Nations as, as its center can meet the aspirations of humanity. And this was very significant because the 
theme of the high level segment this year is multilateralism after covid-19 what kind of a un do we need at the uh, 75th anniversary now the prime minister spoke at length about india's efforts at strengthening multilateralism india has been very consistent in calling for the strengthening of the united nations which of course involves uh reforming the united nations i'm sure that um, there would be ample coverage to this issue during this discussion but let me highlight that a centerpiece of the reforms has to be the security council it is completely out of date the united nations itself was set up on the ashes of the second world war so in fact was ecosoc and the need for adjusting to change global realities can hardly be overstated india was not an independent country when the united nations was set up or when ecosoc was set up or for that matter the security council was set up but india is a very important global player how can you leave out the world's largest democracy from the permanent membership of the security council why is it that we have to wait our turn every 4 5 6 years and then get into the security council to be able to play the role that we would like to and which is expected from us so the high level econo- ecosoc segment give a uh, prime minister the opportunity to focus on what india has been calling for and that is reformed multilateralism okay talking about uh, what the prime minister has been calling for professor what were the other key highlights and takeaways for you from the uh, prime minister's keynote address uh, i think a couple of points frank one uh, in in the context of what the other speakers have said and this idea that you know the world needs to evolve and world needs to change and in- international institutions need to change in accordance with that reality and then he positioned india very interestingly in the way uh, that he often does is that the idea that look despite india's problems india has been so effective in dealing with uh, this pandemic uh, you know making it as he called it people's movement not only state was involved but society was involved and i think that is one of the strengths that he has always portrayed of india that india is a democracy in work that where where state and society will have to work together if you have to achieve larger objectives the other aspect here was that he was trying to argue uh, that look india was not simply doing this for itself but india was doing it uh, as you know as a contribution to the larger global order so whatever india could do to help others india was doing this in this crisis now compare this and i think that juxtaposes with some of the points that earlier were made about reforming multilateralism about what which countries you need inside the tent and i think the fact that mr modi was invited the fact that, that indian prime minister was there talking about his experience and the fact that you have a very interesting situation at the moment where leadership is absent in the global order where both uh, you know on the one hand you have the americans looking very very inwards on another you have a rising china that is challenging uh, you know a lot of the assumptions about the global order and i think that uh, puts india squarely at the center of global debates and prime minister was very careful in articulating that india needs to be looked at in the context of not only reforming of the multilateral order but also what india brings to the table in terms of its own heft in terms of its own ability to deliver as well as its own ability to lead and therefore if you want uh you know a new un system if you want to reform multilateral system then india with its own uh, unique vantage point needs to be a very very important part of that conversation and i think that is the most important element of this of this engagement because we are looking at a world that is changing rapidly without any leadership and that leadership can be provided by countries like india that have a very interesting take on how do you manage this complexity you know it is not yet a developed state it looks at the developing country you know it, it is it, it, a lot of things are very com- in common with what is happening in the developing world and india can bring these two together rising capabilities versus an ability and empathy with the developing countries that is very very unique in the in the current context and i think for prime minister to pitch india at this level means that uh, as i think yoshita mentioned earlier 
it is also a precursor to what india would be doing in the un security council of the next two years so clearly we are looking at a roadmap the prime minister was laying out not only for uh, india's you know global entry into the larger platforms but also what india will be in, intends to do with its own role uh, in the un security council starting january next and also the fact uh, of making a larger point that ambassador was making that india needs to be there permanently right okay uh, so since we are here then let's talk about a couple of aspects in the team itself because uh, you know the team itself can be <laughs> can be discussed in a whole uh, episode of the big picture but uh, touching upon the team yoshita you know uh, what kind of un do we need at the 75th anniversary is there a consensus really as what kind of a un uh, you know the world wants to see or what we want to see and is there a sense uh, that is going around of what kind of a un that we want to see at the 75th anniversary see sure uh, frank so the un that we want to see and i think everybody all the nations want to see at the un at, uh, now in its 75th year is something that has to be more inclusive I mean, if you talk about the Security Council, 15 uh, members, five permanent. Uh, it does not have Africa. I mean, it's it's the biggest, uh, largest continent, so to say. And uh, with the 70% of the UN's work is uh, focused on uh, African uh, issues, but it does not have Africa represented in the council. Uh, India, with the population of 1.3 billion people, a strong democracy, uh, leader in uh, uh, Asia, and uh, economic powerhouse. That's not. Uh, Uh, a permanent member so uh, the un does not reflect contemporary realities i know we've heard that a lot of time but it is actually true because when we have challenges like the covid-19 pandemic um there is no leadership here i mean we've seen the security council uh divisions uh in get coming out with a resolution on the uh, pandemic uh, because of china because of us uh, divisions between russia so it took about 3 4 months after the pandemic hit for the council to come out with a resolution with a statement on covid-19 which was which had already taken hundreds and thousands of lives all around the world so the un has to be for the people it cannot be in the hands of a few countries that rule or that have the power of the veto and then uh, they overshadow whatever is needed or is required by uh, so many developing countries so many small countries and that's what we've seen india bring to the table whether it's cooperation in the south south cooperation framework if we see whether it's with the landlocked developing countries with the small island countries the pacific island countries and the kind of uh, cooperation and collaboration that india brings to the table india takes countries together with it if india is sitting on the council it will not be for itself that's what has been highlighted uh, by the ambassador mr sirumuthi here also and by other uh, experts and uh, diplomats that if india is sitting on the council it will work for other developing countries as well it will not be for its own uh, doing or for its own advantage so clearly i mean at at 35 years the world has changed the world of 2020 is different from the world of 1945 and in fact the world of 2021 will be different from what the world we have this year so clearly we need a multilateral system that works for people that works for small nations that is not controlled by five uh, uh, powers uh, only and then you know we all know how uh, the non permanent rank members they have just two year terms and it's it's very less for any country to bring about any change unless you have a strong i mean you have a veto or a permanent membership so uh, i think at 35 years you need an inclusive a uh, multilateralism that is there for everybody that is there when there is a pandemic like situation when there is a, a economic uh, disaster waiting to happen uh, so that that's where i think uh, is the need of the r now okay all right these points i'm going to take forward with the ambassador you know ambassador india has a solid case really to be a permanent member of the unsc there is absolutely no doubt about that UN reforms have been spoken about for quite a few years now been going back and forth but there is no real consensus on uh, you know any kind of reform because at the end of the day uh, like yoshita was mentioning uh, you know other members have not been able to develop some kind of a consensus really for africa is concerned you know so the other countries have their own issues in uh, southeast asia and east asia as well same is the case with south america too so can we expect any kind of serious reforms taking place in the un that is one secondly of course we all know that it's an elite club a club of five why would they want anyone else to be a part of it part of that jolly gang well you are absolutely right the five permanent members 
of the Security Council do not want to let anyone else in because their own power will be diluted. Now, I would again state that the United Nations as it exists today is the United Nations that had been created out of the ashes of the Second World War. At that time, there were six organs created, uh, the UN General Assembly, Security Council, the Secretariat, ECOSOC, the ICJ, and the Trusteeship Council. The Trusteeship Council was meant to uh, look after the decolonization process. And it was wound up because it was found that it was no longer required for, uh, because there were no longer any sort of needs for decolonization. So the UN did adjust. Now, unfortunately, in regard to the UN Security Council, there has been no readjustment. The world has changed considerably in the 75 years that have elapsed since the UN was set up in 1945. But the UN Security Council, which is the most important organ and which is responsible for maintaining international peace, that unfortunately has fought. And this has been to the detriment of the world at large. India has been very consistent in calling for the reforms of the UN Security Council. We feel that we should be a permanent member because if China, which is the world's biggest dictatorship, where human rights are not respected, where Tiananmen Square took place, where the uh, human rights of the Muslim members in the uh, eastern part of China are trampled upon and where there is complete muzzling of freedom of speech. How can China be sitting in the United Nations at the high table as a permanent member of the Security Council? And a country like India, which is the world's largest democracy, is left out. So the whole system is unjust. We have been calling for reforming it. And I think the Prime Minister hit the nail on the head when he said only reformed multilateralism with a reformed United Nations at its center can meet the aspirations of humanity. Otherwise, the United Nations will not be able to live up to the role which is expected of it. Now, may I just add one small point? Germany and Japan were losers in the Second World War. So they were left out. But, you know, they also have changed considerably. They are robust democracies. They play a great role in the United Nations. How can they be left out? So you contrast, on one hand, India, Germany, Japan. On the other hand, China. The case is self-evident. How do we reform the United Nations? I think the democracies of the world will just have to somehow find a way of doing it. And I think there is a consensus growing among the concert of democracies to act together. Only when the democracies, the larger democracies, will act together can any meaningful reform of the United Nations take place. I don't think it's impossible. Where there is a will, there is a way. All right. Nothing is impossible. Where there is a will, there is a way is what the ambassador is suggesting. Let's hope that it happens sooner rather than later because it is many years overdue already. All right, uh, Professor, let's talk about the first part of the theme of the UN, that is multilateralism after COVID-19. Let me go back to a point that you are making in your opening remarks as well, where the US is looking inwards and the China doing whatever it is that it has been doing over the last uh, five or six months or so. You know, how much of scope is there for multilateralism at this point in time? Because uh, if you look at it, the world seems to be in a difficult place. Uh, absolutely, Frank. I think uh, you know, if, if there was ever a crisis about multilateralism, uh, it is today. And you look around and you look how a crisis like health, uh, global health pandemic has been dealt with by, by, by global multilateral institutions. Uh, and you would come to an agreement, I think, that it, it has been a very, very uh, sorry state of affairs. Uh, Yoshita mentioned UN Security Council not being able to do anything, but there are other organizations as well who we thought uh, were working like G20, for example, they could not do anything. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, other platforms that have been found completely wanting. In particular, uh, WHO. You know, how how can we forget what has happened to WHO? Now, the question, therefore, is that 
are we living in an in an age where multilateralism itself is losing traction because the kind of power equations that are developing uh, they these power equations whether it is because of what the you know the the uh, the, the american leadership or whether it was whether it is because of what china has been able to uh, show to the world a complete ignorance a complete reluctance to acknowledge to abide by any normative considerations any institutional considerations i think these are some of some of the most significant challenges we have ever seen we have been talking about for example you know the reform of the un for quite some time but never have we faced a crisis situation about the entire multilateral order like the one we face today and a lot of this has to do with what china is doing today it, it not only in its foreign policy but also in its wider engagement with the world you look around you know china's periphery it is ripping up treaties it is ripping up its commitments it is ripping up its bilateral and multilateral commitments it is ripping up its regional commitments with asean and clearly there is a sense that china has uh, has you know gone in a in a position where it is Im almost impossible for uh, other states to manage this transition and so a lot of fragmentation is emerging countries are now you know calling for uh, something that uh, ambassador talked about earlier that we need to look at how multilateralism can be sustained within a within a group of like minded countries so for example a concert of democracies uh, you know we have you had uh, this this argument uh, coming from uh, you know, president trump saying that you know g7 should be expanded you have an I, I, you know uh, uh, uk has talked about how democracy should come together to frame uh, 5g responses uh, uh, you know uh, in in the wider context uh, and so there is a sense that regional and uh, countries whether in a particular region whether on issue based areas should converge and this is something also which is more in alignment with indian response for the last few years that issue based alignments perhaps are very important and we will have to take issue based alignments forward so what we are looking at now is uh, is a very complex global environment where multilateralism and the challenges multilateral uh, multilateralism is facing are profound and for a country like india i think therefore the challenges are equally equally serious now india has been of course making this case that look we need to reform the present multilateral order but india is also looking at alternatives to engage with other like minded countries to at least manage the transition period where you have the multilateral order that is seems to be collapsing under the weight of its own contradictions absolutely all right uh ambassador and uh, others of course it's time to get uh, closing comments on the program right now uh, yushita let me start with you first you know uh, so uh let me bring in another aspect now india's overwhelming election as a non permanent member of the un security council what does that mean for us and what does that mean for the un as well going forward right i think uh, the overwhelming election i mean uh, we all saw the results uh, it had got the endorsement of the asia pacific group 184 votes uh it means that you know the international community the world is with india and it believes and uh, stands with india's leadership i mean like i've mentioned uh, when india will sit in the security council it will not be for india alone mm. it will be india working with and for developing countries you know causes of sustainable development goals it's, it's a lot of things are at stake climate change and now uh, reemerging from the covid-19 pandemic and uh, Uh, on sustainable development goals i mean we've all seen and heard that uh, if india succeeds in the sdgs the world will succeed in the sdgs because 1.3 billion people moving ahead and as the prime minister talked about all the initiatives that have been taken uh, on various aspects of development so i think development will be a core agenda for uh, india uh, uh, going uh, forward for the security council uh, and there'll be lessons learned from india's uh, sort of development uh, paradigm you know we have seen how countries can learn from each other and we have to learn from each other even in this covid pandemic how to move ahead uh, whether it's job creation whether it's vaccine whether it's uh, developing the health so uh, when india is sitting as a council and um, you know so all these things will come into play and uh, the resounding election victory just sort of underlines the fact that all these nations are um, with india and are sort of uh, Uh, counting on india to take their voice forward also because uh, sitting in the un high table um, not everybody gets that chance and so when right. india at this juncture i mean india of 2011 12 when india was last as a council member and india of today is very different 
so you know that that's where the leadership will be there and that uh, that that will benefit the entire uh, developing countries as well absolutely ambassador best way forward well the second world war was fought because the fascist powers were expansionist china is doing precisely what they were doing at that time and the prime minister said the age of expansionism is over it is time to uh, revolutionize institutions which can uh, maintain world peace it is time to reform them meaningfully so that expansionist countries like china can be checked in their ventures look at what china has vis a vis us in the on the in ladakh see what they are up to in south china sea their intentions are malefied and the reformed united nations can make sure that expansion is passed like china can be checked we have no alternative in this regard reforming the security council and reforming the united nations as such is the need of the hour and i think the prime minister hit the nail on the head when <coughs> during his address at the ecosoc he addressed this issue okay all right and professor close the show for us with your concluding remarks uh frank i think uh, you know the world stands at an inflection point in some ways and uh, and post pandemic we are looking at a world order that is going to be even more uncertain than what we see today i think the power equations have rapidly evolved and and most of most of the smaller countries developing world really need some help from those countries that claim to be developed that claim to be more resourceful that claim to be more powerful and i think the use of power for greater good is something the prime minister highlighted and i think is it should be the larger theme of of the way uh, which we are going to reform multilateralism power for its own sake which china is demonstrating is clearly not the way forward for international community it it will have to recognize that at the end of the day when the when as the ambassador noted Uh, you know the older order was being established and it, it it was successful for a very long time it was successful because it was aimed on the premise uh, or it was it believed that the that the power of these major countries that that won the second world war could be leveraged for greater good and i think that sense of how do we use major powers in the world for the larger humanity for the larger humanitarian purposes is something that should drive multilateralism rather than the zero sum agenda of some countries in particular china that seems to be uh, you know at the at the moment shaping the global uh, perspective so i think prime minister was very right in articulating the, the need for reform multilateralism he was equally right in positioning india as one of the key countries that will have to be there if you have if the reform multilateralism has any chance of of success and i think that is why what he said and what this uh, you know this this uh, high level summit entailed will have very important bearing on how the conversations around un and around reforms are going to manifest themselves over the next few years absolutely all right on that note then i'll call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us what's coming out of this discussion is that what's coming out of this discussion is that multilateralism is key and like minded countries need to come together age for expansionism is over reform of organizations and systems uh, that support world peace is the need of the hour and also what is of utmost importance is the reform of the un as a whole major powers should work together for the sake of humanity is what the panelists are suggesting with that it's a wrap see you again next time